we don't serve permaculture, permaculture serves us. We don't serve organics, organic serves us. We don't serve homeschooling, Homes homeschooling serves us. Meaning, not that we're not investing in it and putting it and giving it to the broad community. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for your own individual life, uh, it needs to work for you. You have a higher ethos. <laughs>
to the first stage, which is survival. So there's survival, there's stability, there's success and significance. But, and so we kind of had to go back to survival and now uh, we're getting it, we're, we're, we're getting into stability, probably more back into success, some more familiar territory for us in the last few years. So I'm excited about that because we can move forward this year. You know, had a babe, had, our baby's one years old. So last year was kind of just, Katie, bar the door, just kind of maintain what we have. But this year, Rebecca's already planted, had us plant the, the onions and broccoli. And I forgot I covered, I, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, thanks to little baby Henry. And remembered, I did not cover those broccolis and lettuces. I need to go out there real quick because it's going to frost and did that. But I'm just saying, when you're, when you're winter gardening, you're at your success. You're at the level of success in your gardening journey because <laughs> it's it's yeah you, you know you got to make sure it gets covered. It's just you, you can't you can't be having a, a, a my at one point I could barely walk on my ankles. You know I, I had to do a walker and 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 ride around in my Kubota to get around. So that's that's cheering me up. And as far as the book is concerned, that's interesting too. You know, people congratulate on the work of the book. And I think most people imagine the work of the authorship. And that's there. I mean, this is basically 15 years to today to the launch date. Today, the day we're recording is the actual official launch date. People can get the audiobook. People are, it's shipping. Um, the writing, yeah, sure, 15 years. And then formulating those thoughts in writing uh the hard work is actually in getting the word out you know lining up these podcasts thanks for having me on uh putting it out on my vlog building up the audience somebody to somebody who need finding somebody who needs this and and getting their attention and promoting to them so the the hard work is upon us and even maybe there we're at, we're at the tail end this is like launch week so i'm pushing it hard but then next week i can take a deep breath <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. I, we t we spoke kind of right after Thanksgiving. I uh, talked to Rebecca as well and, and all the wonderful foods you guys have cooked and, and how you are preparing um, since then. So I, I want to kind of caveat for those who didn't listen to the last show and kind of a little bit more insight into you and what's going on. You have uh, Abundance Plus where you have a rooted series that uh, I believe are finished already. Yeah, and finished. Um, and basically, um, wonderful content uh, on a vlog and videos of of day to day life and activities, what you're doing, everything from recipes, cooking, how how you're dealing with chickens, how you're dealing with milking. Um, a fabulous content that's really worthy and, and important. And so. It, if you're not a reader, there's the audiobook. If you're not yeah. an audiobook, you want to watch a video, there's Abundance Plus. There's so much content and materials there. Um, but during this winter, we were hit pretty, pretty hard. And uh, there was some things that you showed, wow, the snow's come clear up onto the porch and uh, yeah. messed up with the greenhouse and the, the, the covering and the protective. So you, you've graduated. Um, for multiple harvests a year, winter harvest, which is, you know, that's a, that's a good stage to be at. And, and now you're dealing with some of those, uh, the, the, the growth and the, just the natural environment and, and weather uh, coming in and dealing with that. So uh, overall, I guess the, the answer to the question, I think you're doing well, you're kind of, uh, um, yeah. uh, it's not just thankful to be alive in those struggles. I, I saw definitely your health problems in that. But you also did some very proactive things, not just seeing the doctor and your diet, yeah. but you're you're out doing the cold bass. You were out. Yep. Um, you're you're doing the things for yourself. Sun. Laying yeah. in the sun for an hour is a big deal. Yeah, and that's a, that's a comfortable one to do. You know, cold bath that's painful, but sun bath. Yeah, it takes time, but you can go out there and listen to an audio book or a podcast or uh, even do some work on the phone. You know answer yeah. some emails or something yeah and i i i also do the cold bass and and kind of the wim hof method and that yeah. and it's fabulous uh for arthritis for joints for those things and at the same time and, and you mentioned this in, in the the answer to the first question um 
you're not just doing one thing every day. You're doing a whole system of systems. It's an yeah. ecosystem in your life. It's not just family. It's not just farming. It's not just homesteading. Sure. It's homeschooling, home birding, and on and on, plus taking care of your health. And a lot of people, I, I speak about systems thinking and, and a systemic view or this complexity theory every day, just this day-to-day -day tasks of life is a very complex system of all the things you have to do, yet you manage it. And it's not you alone. This, this journey started originally yeah. from research from Rebecca and some kind of nudges yeah. from her and things, which we talked about on the first. But can you tell us a little bit how, you know, people come to me often and they say, what's one thing I can do? How can I start right now? And you discuss this in the book in, in a couple of chapters, how to get started. If you're a, if you're a homesteader, everybody could be a homesteader, but instead of breaking it down into the siloed view and say, okay, all you have to do is go buy 12 chickens. That's it. Don't worry about anything else. I think it's a little bit more complex. Um, yeah but it's something that we do autonomously every day. And so I'd like to get your viewpoints and your thoughts on that, on, on not just getting started, but how does that work with just the way life works? Yeah, I would, the thing that comes to my mind, and I, th I think I spoke about it indirectly throughout the book. So hopefully it comes across, I didn't term it this way, but I would, what, what, the word that came to my mind when you're saying this is you have to curate your own life. You need to realize that, you are in control. Sure, there are exterior controls, but ultimately no one can control your mind. And I'm, and I'm learning this from survivors of the Holocaust. These, if, if you find, I think I have the book, I think it's called The Choice by Dr. Uh, I forget her name, but The Choice. Uh, she's talking about they, they can, they've, if, if anybody took anything, it was, it was during the Holocaust, right? And so then, th but they couldn't take the mind. And so getting in that mindset and just realizing you are the curator of your life. I'll say this, you know, permaculture doesn't serve us. We or no way. Um, how would it go? So uh, we don't serve permaculture. Permaculture serves us. We don't serve organics. Organic serves us. We don't serve homeschooling. Homes homeschooling serves us. Meaning not that we're not investing in it and putting it and giving it to the broad community. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for your own individual life. Uh, it needs to work for you. You have a higher ethos. You have a higher, uh, a, a high goal. There was a reason you were attracted to permaculture or organics or off-grid living. You can sometimes lose track of that in making decisions. You, you forget about the macro and you can get caught up in the micro and you're doing all these things for the homestead because somebody told you you should grow kale because it's cool. You this whole kale yeah movement, but you might not like kale, <laughs> and you you might not realize somebody might give you uh, thirty blueberry bushes, and maybe you don't really have a spot for them, but but you, you know you feel weird about not doing it, and oh my goodness. Every problem culture should have a, poop, a blue a blueberry bush, and I should have this guild. I should put these blueberries around this this tree, and and then I should put low low things, and I should have a vine, you know. But then, if if though that is stressing you out for one, or uh, hurting your family relationships, it's got to go. You have the you got to remember, and 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 Bill Mollison, I think digging deep would agree with you you've you've people care and earth care so that's the macro you know it gives me chills talking about it so you so we forget the why we got into these things we we get into homesteading because we were attracted to it because we we want to be outside we want to work with our children but then if you stack too many things and you're doing too many things because bees are cool and they're pollinators and you should have bees i don't have bees yet and I'm going to need to be okay with that. I have to settle with that. And um, because there's only so much time and energy in the day. And I got into this to be with my family. And if it becomes miserable because we're on such a, a strict schedule and we got to do this and that, then what's the point? Why did I, why did I quit my nine to five to then have a 17 hour a day job? To, to have a hundred hour job on the farm where I'm really not interacting and enjoying the family. 
See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely see what you're saying. And that's one thing about, I love about the root of life. So um, not only do you have this wire, this dream or vision, and many people do, many people even who are living in the big cities with apartments are saying, boy, this, this lifestyle, this way I'm living in this concrete jungle, it's not working for me anymore. I don't yeah. enjoy it. I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm actually working for someone else or it's just a drain. It's not the lifestyle yeah. creation or vision that, that I would hope for myself. And so then they start looking into alternatives and how they can shift if they can and where that, and that's all available, not only Abundance Plus, but it's also discussed about in your book. And I, I would say that's probably one of my favorite chapters. So there's 10 chapters and um, there's rooted as a family. Yeah. And so how do you get, whether it's man or woman or, you know, the, the, the husband or wife, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or even husband and husband, wife and wife, whatever yeah. it is, how do you get them on board? Um, and, and, and what does that look like here? Is it, is it a fight or is it a struggle? And so you talk about that and you also talk about children. How do you get them on board? Because yeah. they want to have a life of uh, learning, growing, exploring, and um, you can actually ruin um, their experience. I don't want to do anything with farming. I want to move to the big city. This is hard life. I don't enjoy it. Or there's a flip side to that discovery exploration and bribery. You even talk about that a little yeah. bit, how you can <laughs> nudge them to kind of discover, Hey, this is a pretty good life. I've got it great. And, um, I, I love to participate. And uh, that, I mean, that, that really was my favorite chapter besides, you know, how do you get started? How, how do you raise chickens? How do you uh, um, use yeah. chickens for meat yeah. and chickens for eggs? Yeah. So I, I'd love for you to kind of tell me um, why you chose to put that in there. Or was it so much feedback from others? Or how do you manage families yeah. or is it just something that you experience yourself? That is a, that's a really good question. This book as we started out was going to, it started out being like a all inclusive, you know, just us, me working with my agent and the publisher, you know, let's kind of include all the things and what was going to be the name of the book. You know, I was voting for like your best homestead ever type of thing. And it being this all inclusive, like intro to permaculture type of applied to homesteading type of thing. And, uh, that was good. And we have that. And, you know, there's some things I wrote from there on like how to do the mineral program for the sheep and the cows. And that I probably get asked that every other day. And so I'll just send them that article, you know, it never came close to making the book. But as that's one thing I've really liked about working with a publisher and an agent is swallowing the pride and even giving up some control to collab to collaborate. And they kept pushing for the publisher kept envisioning a more holistic, let's include lifestyle. Let's get this in target. Cause I think Mark, I mean, you might be by cause you're kind of, you're in permaculture and stuff, but I think a normal person, I, I, like we're, we're, we're crazy. The normal, normal person could actually pick this up and enjoy themselves. Hopefully, you know, there's a fun story at the beginning of each chapter, the three of the 10 chapters, are really not even about homesteading. You could apply it to anything like what you're talking about. It's lifestyle. Like how do you get your, your spouse on board, a significant other partner, you, you, that could apply if, if you're into something else and you just want, you, you just have this big desire and you just want somebody to come on board. Uh, so I, I, what I found though, when the publisher and, and the agent were pushing me to give this lifestyle content, let's call it lifestyle content, the words flow. And I really enjoyed it. And I find myself talking more about it now on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the YouTube. And I, I host a podcast too. And, and it's in person and people come here. We really don't even talk about homesteading. We have a show um, called Divergence on, on Abundance Plus. And that's kind of replaced our, replaced our show, Rooted. We told our epic story. Now we're telling other epic stories. And we're getting into the, it's that whole idea of the Robert Frost poem, you know, two paths diverge in the wood. And I, I took the one less taken. And I just want to talk about people's, I am very interested in people who have opted out of the norm and just done something different. I don't care if it's 
if it's greening the desert or uh, deciding to start a business with all eight of your kids, you know, and, and, and work all together as a family. Those are those things are interesting to me. And the words flowed for me. And I found that people really resonate with that. They they might not identify with this grandiose homestead that we have. That might even seem unattainable to some. But what everybody can relate to, no matter where they are in their stage of homesteading or permaculture, is these life struggles. How do I how, how do I get a spouse excited about what I'm doing? How do I get kids excited about what I'm doing? Uh, those kinds of things. And when when you do that, um, it just resonates as a lifestyle, and you see that you see that growth and that function. You you have. You're living life. I mean, we've been on a couple of calls and the kids will come in. They'll probably come yeah. in on, on this call. That's fine. That's life. <laughs> and and uh, the, that interaction and they know, you know, I'm first of all, I'm so thankful that you take the time out because you have uh, 75 acres of, of yeah. multi-diverse uh not just crops and animals, but you, you've got a lot going on there. You're living the life to the fullest and um, you and your family kind of are, are busy. So stuff will pop up all the time. And that's just life. Um, some of the other podcasts I've had were, were um, some of the authors, uh, you know, cattle jump on the computer or a dog will run over, they'll be yeah. in the house or some kind of different situation. That, that's life as well. But it's a lot different than being out on a farm, on, uh, on a homestead and in nature connected with animals and other species and microorganisms. And even though you start out, you know, if I can homestead, anybody can homestead, then you go into yeah. gardening and the different chapters and you talk about what kind of things can you can can you start to do? What do the harvests look like? Um, those are all different choices that you made along the way of how you're going to start and, and maybe even start slowly to kind of create this yeah. ecosystem of homesteading. And um, it, I, I've seen the evolution because I've also looked at your abundance plus, but I really want to know from you um, if, if there's some aha moments or how that journey evolved or you says, boy, I got into this and quickly gave it up because uh, it wasn't the right time or a, a big struggle or even that you show people on your abundance that struggle. I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love, you know, that yeah. learning lesson. Yeah, there's a classic struggle. So it's helped me as a filmmaker and a storyteller to realize it's the struggles that make the story exciting and interesting and relatable to everyone. There, there'll be people in New York City say, I live in New York City. I'm never going to farm, but I enjoy your show. Why do they enjoy my show? Because in the beginning, uh, I'll, uh, it's clear that I want to go and uh, flip the garden beds. I want to go work in the garden. That's what I want to do. Well, guess what? So I'm on my way. That's that's the I'm the hero of the story. We know what I want. We can all relate to that. And then Mr. Brown, my littlest boy, can't find his shoes, but I want to take him with me. So it's it's a classic and it's a big joke around our, uh, us and my community. And everybody loves it. Me trying to find Mr. Brown's shoes, help him. And we find them all over the place. You know, it's that. It's that battle and it's that debate. Uh, it starts debates among parents. Oh, you know, you should make him be more responsible and put it back. And then that's one side. And the other side is, oh, I love it how you help him. He's going to help you. So you're going to help him. And you go. so it, it creates this conversation. And anybody can relate to that because th somebody else you know, living a normal life will, might be trying to find the kids' shoes before they go to school or to church or something like that. And it's this, it's this struggle and people can relate to that. And so I've been uh, careful to document that. Our temptation is to just go out and get the good stuff. Just go out and get the step-by-step -step in the garden. And this is what you do in the garden, step one, step two, step three. And I found that if in my content, what people enjoy so much about it is and why our YouTube channel has been so successful. And there's a place for what I call that textbook style um, teaching and content. There's a place. There's nothing wrong with it. I consume that stuff. Sometimes you want to get just straight to the point. 
But other times, if you only see that, if you only see these great successes and these step by steps, and you don't hear or see this expert coming to a situation where he doesn't know what to do. Uh, and, and that will happen, you know, uh, and, and bad thing and, and things will happen. Like we had a heifer, heifer is a female cow give birth just recently, totally surprised. She and the bull got together. She was way too young. She was like 10 months old. You're supposed to wait at least till they're 20 months old. This happened to me. The apron wearing permaculture chicken ninja master, the guy who wrote the book that really shouldn't have happened. But I was, I was ailed this summer and the boys were running the farm and some happened. Those two got together. <laughs> and there's a temptation not to show that because this expert sh shouldn't have these types of, but they do. They do. If you get down to it and talk down, talk to Joel Salatin, you know, some of my mentors are Elliot Coleman. They're going to have times where something fails and they don't know why. They're going to have times where something fails and it was their fault. And they're going to have times where something fails and it was the weather and completely out of their control uh, or somebody else. So in the book, it's it's important to me that we tell those stories. Because I think it's empowering if I'm following somebody. I, uh, I am animal based diet kind of person and I'm eating a lot of animals. It's, it's helping me with my Lyme and um, I'll follow somebody. And when they show their Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is a big deal in America for anybody listening not in America it's like a big deal we have this big meal and uh we have turkey or ham or something like that and then all these sides it's just a big meal but for one of these guys to you know just show off and, and show their steak they didn't even have turkey they could have turkey come on uh but they didn't you know do the size or have this cheat day you know what I mean it's almost it has the opposite effect I think sometimes to see somebody succeed all the time and never see a failure or a struggle, it's hard to relate to. And it makes it feel unattainable and impossible. And so that's what we try to do with the book. We, we tell these funny stories and, and, and these goofy mistakes and these moments where I wanted all the chickens to die because I was just so tired and didn't want to go out there and put them up for the 10,000th time. Just admitting to that, I think, puts people in this Okay, they don't feel so nuts because when you get into homesteading, you're washing buckets every day. If you're milking the cow, that's every day. You're letting the chickens out in the morning, putting them up at night. That gets old after three days. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's every single day, period. These are living beings, uh, uh, species, yeah. and and it's every single day. There's no rest. Yeah. And even, no even rest. when you, you, you did, uh, recently went to the, the farm, uh, equipment show and yeah. fabulous spoke there and did, uh, sign some plates for your book and, yeah. and, uh, just watching that. The, the one thing, not only can you find these nuggets in the book that, uh, the real stories, the struggles, the day to day and how to deal with them or how you've dealt with them and, and maybe some suggestions. I mean, you're not the, you know, this isn't saying this is this way or the highway. It's kind of yeah. like, well, you know, I've made mistakes. I, I learned these lessons and here's my suggestions. And it's really fabulous. And I, I love that throughout the book. I, I do want to kind of caveat a, a couple other things. So if this is something that you want to get into, if you want to even experiment, read and kind of learn a little bit, there's so much accompanying other material that you have out there, not just your blog, but you have Abundance yeah. Plus, which with all the videos, and it's not just rooted your series and and in and, and, and your vlog things, but it's other people, other homesteaders, other um butchers and 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 yeah. homesteaders and gardeners and farmers and and those who are starting or maybe have been doing it for a while that you can view learn from and there's also those points where you get right into it where okay this is what i need to know how can i get this information as fast as i possibly can and get started just just yeah. start or it's also boy I'm setting up my dream and vision. I want to see the struggles. I want to see what yes. happens uh, throughout the year. I want to follow them along. 
and then maybe after a year of, uh, of consuming this content, then I'm going to make the leap or, or you know, yes. just I, I'm better for it because exactly. that's something I didn't know about food. That's something I didn't know about homesteading or farming that now I know I can relate better as somebody living in New York City who's nowhere close towards or, you know, in Manhattan, nowhere close to a farm. And so uh, that's absolutely wonderful. In in this, we really want to push um, and, and talk about those who are interested, if this sounds exciting, um, Justin has provided a wonderful website, therootedlife.com, I believe if I'm saying the website correctly, and there's some bonus materials. If you signed up today um, before yeah. March 7th, you're going to get some great bonuses. You get uh, chapter three, gardening basics as a PDF with step-by-step -step instructions and even charts where you can fill in, which are really helpful um, uh, in three different styles. You also get uh, the, the video masterclass, gardening basics, that's illustrated to, to accompany that. Um, you will be inspired with, with a chapter on just plant, you know, get started, get going. Another video masterclass and uh, Justin and, and Rebecca and the, the kids are going to send you out a free basil seed packet to get you started. Whether you're yeah. in an apartment, you want to do some basil on your windowsill or in your kitchen or wherever, or if you, you are starting this process, how do you get started? How do you see what happens even with, a, with a, something that could be considered simple as basil? Um, you get an autograph signed book plate to stick in your book, which is... It's fabulous. I have to. Uh, I have to tease you because I, I want to. I want you to come and sign up. I'm going to come and visit you. We're going to do a live podcast. Oh, that'd be here. fun. Your yeah, you come here. I'll get you on my show too. Uh, yeah, and um, and and so as you go in and fill out that that form at the rootedlife.com, there's kind of just a simple form uh, to pre-order and and before March seventh to get some of those bonus materials. For those of you who are seeing Justin for the first time, um, he's a everybody's people person. He's likable. Everybody loves him. When you see him at shows, people are hugging him and, and telling him their stories. It's, this is family-oriented content, not only the videos, but the book. And it's, it's real-life content. How do you create a lifestyle of abundance? How do you create something that... Uh, is different than the world that we're currently experiencing in many parts. You know, a lot of um, dis-ease, a lot of discomfort, a lot of a, a lot of things that we're saying life's just not going the way we want. Yeah. There is a way to take the bull by the horns, or life by the horns, and create this why, this lifestyle that you want. And there's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in in, in uh, this wonderful book that you can that you can go and get to help you create that. Now, and I'll put the links, all the links in the show note description so that you can find that, but it's really critical. Let's go do this before March 7th. I want to give you some other um, nuggets specifically from, from uh, Justin uh, in the book. And uh, I've seen this in other places. You kind of ask people, what's their favorite chapter who have had the opportunity to pre-read yeah. it and gotten some yeah. feedback. What is, what is your biggest takeaway or what's your biggest learning lesson that as hit getting feedback from others that you'd like to share with us that really uh, uh, what you've heard, yeah. why they like the book and what resonates with them the most. Yeah. As, as people have come through, we've had a, we've printed out a PDF copy and the first thing they'll do, first thing, if, if anybody's listening to this, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to just, you're going to rub the cover. It's a beautiful cover. It feels good. Me, I'm a book nerd. So I smell the book. It smells great. But you're going to open it up and you're going to look at all the pictures. It's a coffee table book in that way. There's just beautiful pictures. We spent a year, once a month, getting our buddy Ben Roberts, professional photographer, coming out and shooting pictures of us. So it's an entire season. I probably should highlight that more. Like the, the pictures, you're seeing an entire Rhodes Family Farm season in one book. And so it could be a coffee table book if you don't even read, you don't even read the, the stuff. And then um, you'll, what, I, we had a guest come and they spent the night 
over in our guest house and they read the book in one evening. So it's 40, 50,000 words. Uh, I say a third of it is lifestyle and, and 60, 70% of it is uh, more step-by-step. Step. What I was saying, it, it, this, this lady who read it in one night, she was living in DC. Her mom was the one who was, who was initiating this visit with us. So she's kind of into it, not really. And she said, this makes me feel like I can do this. It wasn't on my radar, but I read this. Like it was enough for her to read and enjoy it, even though it wasn't on her radar. Now it is. It felt attainable for her. So apparently a lot of people, and, and I look back 15 years ago when I started, yeah, it felt unattainable. What Joel Salatin was, these are the people we found, Joel Salatin, L.A. Coleman, what they were doing, uh, uh, Bill Molson, the intro to permaculture books, you see these wonderful, beautiful maps of these, these layouts. Let's admit it. If you really think about it, it can feel unattainable. At least you say, how do I get started? How long is this going to take me? And what Rebecca and I had to do is get the books. We got for, for just chickens and gardens, guys. We got Intro to Permaculture, Bill Mollison. Um, we get, hold on one second. Yes? Mm -mm. If you come in, go see mom. Uh, you can ask me in about 30-ish minutes. All right. Are you coming in to see mom? Because I'm doing the show. What? I'm the only one that got a chair. You're only one what? When you were playing, uh -huh. you're the only one that got a team. Okay, tell Josiah I said that you have to be on a team. Tell him I said what? that. Yeah. No, Here. A team I, I know, we're going to get you a team. You're on Joe Sai's team, okay? Uh, no, he won't, he won't let me be on his team. All right. Anyway, yeah. Let me give him a I note. It's eating none. And I'm really hungry. We'll get you an apple. And then. I'm going to sit on the couch until mama comes in, okay? Okay, but you have to sit quiet, okay? okay. You go back out, give this note to Josiah. Okay. All right, so here's the note if you need it, get in. Okay. So I got, I got Bill Mollison's book, Intro to Permaculture. Uh, we're talking just chickens and gardens. I got uh, Joel Salatin's Pasture Poultry Profits, Elliot Coleman's New Organic Growler, er Elliot Coleman's Four Seasons Harvest, and Harvey Ussery's Small Scale Poultry Flock. If you put that together, that's, a, that's books about that thick. But what now looking back, and realizing what I've done is I've taken those books and my 15 years of experience and info from building a relationship with an audience who's really out there doing it, just getting started. And I've condensed it into something you can read in an evening, plus added a lifestyle feature. Now, if you, if you want to geek out and get serious, sure, get those books. I, I highly recommend those books. But if you just just are, are feeling like things are unattainable. You know, that, that's what happens. It, that, that's the benefit of time. I asked Rebecca, how, how was it that you found Elliot Coleman and Joel Salatin? Because those 15 years later, those tend to, that's like the right people. They're doing it organically. Joel's doing it the permaculture way. These are the right people. Like how, like we didn't know any difference. How come we didn't find somebody else? She said, well, there was really only so many books 15 years ago on this. Good point, Rebecca. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Joel, for being pioneers in that. And that's what we've done too now, Mark, I realize, is we're just putting out this content. We're cranking it out. We have 2,000 videos on our YouTube. We have over 500 in Abundance Plus. We're cranking out this content. And, and maybe we're, and, and this is a regenerative ag style, sustainable type content. But we're not always preaching that. I'm, I'm rarely preaching that. I'm like, this is my life. This is what I'm doing. Come along. And people, when they go to build a chick, chicken coop, they're not building a chicken coop, some, some static, stupid thing that, 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 that is just going to collect chicken manure and cost $3,000. They're building my chick shaw, which means poop's falling down into the ground. They don't have to clean up. And they're moving that chick shaw. See? 
because why? That well, that 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 they that's just what you do. <laughs> that's just what Justin does. <laughs> Instead of a rickshaw, it's a chickshaw. But didn't you yeah. used to call it the chicken tractor? And it's also taken it like an evolution. It was like first yeah. a kind of a, a, a hen house on wheels that was mobile, and then it was you know yeah. I, I I love that evolution and and um, it's probably also specific on how you create that that fits your farm, your lifestyle, where you're at, yeah. how you're re regenerating the soil. I love that. Yeah. So what we're doing is what I call immersion learning. I think I might have heard that. Uh, then I wish I could think of his name. Uh, gosh, you probably know who it is. I'll have to look it up. But there's this term called immersion learning. And that's what we do with our, our, our homeschooling. They're, they're along with us, they're immersed in life and they're learning. So if you, if you watch our blog, you might not know it, but you're learning. It's not a sit down and step by step, but you're learning. Um, and it could be any number of things. It could be being encouraged on, on how to talk to a child. It could be, uh, I did casually say in my vlog yesterday, we're planting this lettuce in a raised bed four per square foot. So you learn some plant spacing there, but you're also seeing me try to get the kids on board and, and, and get them to do this. And I'm telling a story during this whole thing. Um, and you know, for, for folks that I realize, cause I'm this way, I, I want to be entertained and, and, and learn immersion, but also too, I'm very literal. And I also want the steps at some point and I want to be able to just go to them. So that's what I did in the book was, you can hear the story about how we got started uh, homesteading, which is basically trying to save some money, uh, being at the grocery store and seeing some seed packs and realizing we can grow 100x if we just buy the seeds and grow them ourselves as opposed to buying it. And you can get that immersion learning story and it be aspiring, but what if you actually wanna go plant that, that kale or, or lettuce? Well, then go to chapter three and you've got three choices. You can, you can do container garden. So if you're, guys, I went on the road. Mark, you probably know this. I was on the road on the Great American Farm Tour for 10 months. Went to all states in America. In 10 months, we didn't let being on the road stop us from growing. We got a base, we got a five-inch terracotta pot. Got some Vel Velcro from Walmart. Stuck that thing to the dash. Planted some seeds and um, where were we? Iowa or something, somewhere like that, and planted some of those seeds, nurtured them, uh, grew them out in our windowsill, and harvested the, the, the basil leaves in Wyoming and put it on our pizza. And we had meal from, we had food from the land <laughs> in a bus. So you can container garden. I'll tell you how to do that. You can um, do the bulletproof garden, which totally getting, getting from permaculture from Jeff Lawton, from what Bill Molson says to how to build a garden, uh, but some new things, you know, uh, I don't use cardboard. I, th I think, that, you know, there's some, maybe there's some glue in there that I might be a little worried about, um, but if you don't have anything, do the cardboard, but, but, but there's now non-toxic weed barrier paper. It's actually available. That wasn't available three, five years ago. Yeah. So, you know, I encourage people to, you know, put their food scraps down first, it, it, don't till, uh, put your food scraps down first, then then go buy compost. Like when we, we're talking about people who are just starting out. Elliot Coleman doesn't make his own compost. He's getting it from Vermont Composting in a state over. And that's okay. I saw that on the Great American Farm Tour. And there's there's no shame in that. There are master compost makers. Get rid of this shame that you've got to do everything and just go get some from the store. Support somebody else's job. Support the community. Bring in some compost. You're going to have a much better success rate. So you're going to get your the you're going to get your money back more than if you probably went through the struggle. I, if you want to make it great, but I'm, uh, let's meet some people where they're at. Buy the compost. I'm saying don't let anything stop you. But put that weed barrier on there. Uh, grass clippings. Most people have a lawn. If you want to be uh, romantic, go out there and cut it with a scythe. But if not, you have a mower, cut it, get you a rake, rake it up, put your grass clippings down, and then buy some starts. Why are you picking all the battles? Why are you trying to make the compost, uh, buy the tiller? Til why are you, why are you um, uh, growing your own seeds? At first, 
don't pick those battles. Just get the stuff, get the plant start. You can go to your local hardware store or gardening store and get the plants that are already four inches tall. They're already four weeks old. And then just dig you a little hole in there, get down to the soil and plop it in there <laughs> and walk away. Literally. That's why I call it the bulletproof garden because you can walk, you can literally walk away and come back at harvest. It keeps itself moist. You've planted in that store-bought compost. So it's, it's good stuff. Uh, and you could do that, I think, if you did it at the right time in Utah, because you're importing the soil, right? Or in North Carolina, you, you would, it'd be a different time of the year, probably, but. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's everything specific because wherever you're at, there's this uh, indigenous microorganism, this kind of a yeah. biome for mm -hmm. your farm, which, which really works and thrives for your location. And so it's always specific to you and your location, but the, the overall principles are the same. I have to, two points, I have to totally agree with you on these books. I've had the books, I've taken the courses, uh, big, thick academic manuals, uh, mm -hmm. uh, very heavy, very expensive. I think Bill Mollison's, uh, e even his last version of, a, of his books, you know, well over a couple hundred hundred dollars just to get that. And people get that and they're like, oh, I'm going to be do permaculture. I'm going to do this. And, and it's an immediate overwhelmment. It's an immediate thing. Boy, there's terms I've never heard. This is so complex. How do I remember all this stuff? And honestly, I don't, Jeff, Jeff Lawton and Bill Mollison and um, all the other greats that you've mentioned and many more, they're fabulous. It's all in this book. It's right here. Here's the best way to start. <laughs> learn, learn the hard yeah. way, have the experiences, get the lessons. And even if you're starting out a little bit down and dirty, along the way, you'll say, boy, there's maybe a more organic or natural way to do it. I'm worried a little bit about, uh, am I composting the glue that you mentioned in the cardboard or, or something? I don't want that in my food. I don't want that in my, in my soil. Um, you know, and, and you, you learn, but you also evolve and you say, hey, I'm one with my property. I'm one with where, what I'm doing and I know the way it works. And, and you kind of have this, this growth and that's where the title is fabulous. That's where you get that rooted life. That's where yeah. you have abundant, healthy soil that gives you that hold, that moss, but not only in the literal sense but also in in the sense of how you're rooting your family your lifestyle and and how yeah. how how do you make it work and it just creates this this abundance that you also talk about the second yeah. thing i want to really mention and um anybody who or i don't know anybody and you'll have to correct me who who gets in line with you who reads your books who watches your videos slowly a community starts to form yeah. not only with you and referrals and articles or things that you've written but how can i find my local community my local area and you offer that not only through abundance yes. plus you offer that in the resources you say hey if you'd like to get in this here's those hi sweetheart how are you <laughs> look at hi Re hi rebecca it's good to see Hello. you hey how are you most excellent. It's so wonderful to see you. Um, you we, we've talked about you a couple of times, so your ears are probably ringing on oh, the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, nice. But but I love that community. And and um, no matter whether it's you're going to the farm equipment show or if if you're doing a video, it's this community that's built. And I think that is so important because I've also, and I need to mention this as well, seen you go to people in need without them asking to help them in hard times. And, and that is vital, which I, I hope also occurred when you were really at the height of your struggles with your, with your arthritis pains and your struggle with what was going on with your joints and, and your health. Yeah. Uh, I speak first with the, with the book thing, there was actually going to be a dedicated chapter to, designing your best homestead ever so it was going to be the the compartmentalized permaculture bit but then working with the the publisher and, the, and my agent and then we brought in a writer 
at the end and just you know make sure we tell a story at, the, at each chapter make sure there's no overlaps that type of thing and we decided that it would be better because this is this is aimed more mass more mainstream let's reach the mainstream let's reach an audience i haven't reached yet and we can actually incorporate the the permaculture stuff throughout the text and i think that's been really good and that's a really good healthy way to bring to bring on and have something like permaculture in in your life that's what it ends up being it ends up being a sprinkling throughout your life like i took permaculture concept which is turning a problem into a solution that you know they taught me to do that in my training at pd's in, in australia with jeff um turn a problem into solution i did that with my lyme disease i finally sat down and said how can i turn my lyme disease into a solution and that's when i came to actually thank the disease for the all that it's brought to me and so now it became a friend as opposed to an enemy and that was a big turning point in my life and in, in reflection and then dealing with that like I, i've seen more healing by befriending the disease than than fighting it because this is something in my body and i do i really want to be at war with that uh, uh, and, and, you know, maybe I should massage it out, you know what I mean? <laughs> As opposed to <laughs> yeah, just overall yeah. attack it. So that was good. Cause we, we mixed that throughout and that's, and then you talk about community. So we speak to that in the book, because what happens is Martha, Martha Stewart and Oprah have a garden. Those are totally acceptable. You can kind of have an, a garden and things not to change too much in your life. And that's good. And we got to reach people where they're at and, and, and go at this gardening thing. Well, what happens though is somebody with a garden, they end up getting a chicken. And, and you'll see what we've done with our book is we have a start smart chapter. That's a, there's a lot of permaculture concepts coming out in that, but a little bit more, you know, speaking more into the lifestyle, you know, grow what you grow. It's close to your heart. You know, Bill Mollison said, grow out what's outside your door. Well, I say also grow outside what's outside the door of your heart. So yes, start right outside your door with your terracotta pots, but start with what you like. Don't grow kale because it's cool. Grow potatoes. If you're a meat and potatoes kind of person, start there. And so just mixing that throughout and realizing that people are going to um, get that chicken. And there's where I can plug in permaculture again, because chickens and gardens work together beautifully. So you, the biggest permaculture, if there's a permaculture chapter in my book, it's called Sweet Synergy. And it's, and it's taking chickens and gardens uh, to do, to work together. They complement each other. They're, they, it certainly put the garden next to your chickens at least so you can throw your scrap veggies to your chickens and you've hopefully got your chickens chickens on deep bedding wood chips and that eventually turns into compost and you can feed that compost to your garden and they feed each other so it's this sweet synergy and it goes it goes throughout and 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 you know when i in the gardening chapter i bring in permaculture by saying well put it close to your door put, put it as close as you can to your door okay so just kind of you know squeeze it and everybody can relate to that make sure you put it on if you're in the uh, northern hemisphere like we are put it on the south side of your house where it gets the sun so put it on the, the south side so then we're, we're we're considering um these elements you know there's a whole chapter on 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 considering the wind and the and the sun and these kinds of exposures and permaculture but let's just say hey flattest spot closest to your door the most sunshine go <laughs> then do that it's a good foundation then if you like it then geek out right and get these other books you might want to go the gardening route. you might want to go more chicken route but what happens when people then get the chicken mark is they become a homesteader for sure and there becomes a lifestyle change because you've got to let the chickens out in the morning you've got to put them up at night You've got to leave the party early. You got to say, hey, guys, I got to go. Got to put the chickens out. And they all they all kind of laugh when you leave. There goes the crazy chicken lady. She got to go put her chickens. <laughs> go put, her... <laughs> but, put those chickens up. You've changed your, you, you've changed your lifestyle. And it doesn't have to be lonesome. 
we were lonesome for a long time and we didn't know it could be otherwise we didn't know we could start creating contents around it it could be taking pictures and putting it on instagram you don't have to make a career out of it like i have it could be making videos about your journey you don't have to have all the answers to start documenting and it builds a little bit of a community a tribe behind you and at first it's dms and emails and then it's people saying well can i come visit yeah come visit and then you have these friends and then all of a sudden you have this rich community and once a month now we meet we meet with homesteaders who are within an hour, two hours away from us. We figured out that you can get, it's worth, you know, you're, in, we're in our forties once a month comes soon enough. You can look forward to it, but not too much. If it was every week, forget it. You know, it's hard to leave the homestead for that. Something like uh, committing to a church service or something once a week is too much you know, for, for, for somebody who loves to be at home and has a homestead a weekly commitment out of farm is too much once a month we can do it. and it's absolutely it's I'm a, a big event every quarter something like that going somewhere i'm getting jealous already because i can hear rebecca it's probably around lunchtime where you're at so i, I think i i wish yeah. i could just swing by i'd like to come well you come, come by and grab some lunch with you guys i'm sure you it's, come a, and we'll feed it's you a good. great good. experience well, we I have a cabin uh, you can stay in. You come see us. We'll put you on the show. Yeah, that'd be great. I want I, I want to ask you two kind of uh, more questions that kind of dear to my heart and things that I, that I do a lot in, in my other work. And I want to see how it's affected you, how that transition. So you mentioned the community, not only of other homesteaders, other people interested in the content, but also the community of those animals that you raise and nurture and, and get sustenance out of that. Um, I've had other people on the podcast who have mentioned your name. I don't know if you know uh, Ashley Colby or other of subsistence farming and others that are really what you do resonates with them. I, I want to kind of go a little deeper. How do you view not just organics, not just regenerative ag or permaculture, how do you view the environment in your role as a steward um, in the environment of your homestead, of your farm, but also in the community as a whole, where it relates to food and you growing food. What are your thoughts or feelings on, on how you play that? I, I'm, I'm sure you're probably not saying I'm a tree hugger or environmentalist yeah. or, or this big person, but, but there's a vital role in, in what your stewardship is for the earth. Yeah, I would hope to God I'm a, an environmentalist that I could put that in my in, in my description too, the, one of the, what's cool about homesteading is it solves a lot of problems. So it can be a lot of things. Uh, it can be your gym membership. You're supposed to go and train. Well, it can be your earth's gym. It can be your grocery store. Uh, it can be your therapy going out and getting quiet and being nature. You're supposed to spend a certain you know, what's the Zen proverb? Everybody should spend 20 minutes a day in nature. And if they're busy, they should spend an hour. <laughs> if they're too busy for that, they should spend an hour. <laughs> so, uh, but at sun exposure, you're supposed to get your vitamin D. Well, go out and work in the heat. Um, cold exposure, you're supposed to, supposed to get cold for a certain period of time. Take your coat off when you're doing chores in the morning. Um, these things, and also, so, so the environment. Oh my goodness. Talk about local. It doesn't get any more local than that. Get, uh, Henry had a shirt on yesterday. What he's, what's his shirt to say, Rebecca, about breastfeeding? Eat local, breastfeed. He's, his, his shirt, his little Henry's one years old, he's still breastfeeding. Uh, eat local, breastfeed. <laughs> I'm thinking about that. There ain't no more local than that. And about, that's about all he's eating. And there's not more, there's not, I'm looking out, I'm looking out here at 1300 square feet in my yard. I'm seeing a bulletproof garden herbs i'm seeing a compost corner where the chickens run and are making compost i see seven guys i see seven uh, four by eight foot raised beds which is a large container garden really i i we just planted in just one of these half the bed like 80 something lettuce plants and half of it and the other half uh, how many broccolis we put in there rebecca a dozen broccolis or so and, and the family likes to eat veggies. That's a lot. 
Okay. And I will admit to this, I, I was in a bit of a turmoil when I went on the tour and I, I was introduced to what you call a silage tar. Uh, JM Fortier uh, is, is pioneering this. It's plastic. It's, it's, it's a UV resistant plastic, but it's, you're done with the garden. You put the silage tarp over it and it, 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 it keeps the, the weeds down. Now, depending on who you're talking to, a, perma, a, a permaculturalist might not do that. I mean, that's not as, as, as perm, if, if you want to use permaculture as a verb, that's not as permaculture as putting wood chips on it or something, covering it with something natural. So here's this conflict. So, all right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm leery. I hate it. I know this plastic's going to be around 450 years. Uh, but also somebody pointed out to me too. Well, yeah, that plastic's going to be around for 450 feet. Like if you take care of it, get patches for it. When you get a hole in it, it's, it's going to last you for life. So there is that. So, okay, maybe I'll try this. Well, I go put it on my garden and, um, because and I realize as a teacher, not everybody can get wood chips, and I my wood chip source even dried out. So it's not there's not always a tree service or a public works or a, a there's, it's not always available. You know, grass clippings are generally available. So I've started teaching more grass clippings, but that's harder on like a 1,200 square foot garden to get that many grass clippings. So I'm going to this. I put this tarp down. Well. I come back weeks, months later, I forget. And sure enough, no weeds are there. It's kept it at bay. It's, 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 a, um, it's, it's a mulch, it's a covering in a way. And I pull that up, the worm castings and the worms. I was just blown away. Now I can see either side and I can see somebody getting upset about, you know, the use of plastic there, but, but here, we're using plastic and plastic all over the place. The people listening to this are using plastic to listen to this <laughs> with their smartphone or computer. Um, it seems like there's gonna, there's always going to be a compromise. You have to find, find where that's at and see what you're comfortable with. I mean, power to you. If you want to just go and just hardcore live off the land, like the Cherokee nation around here, they didn't need any of this. They didn't need any plastic. I'm, I'm, I'm for you. If you can do it, I'm going to cheer you on. I'll probably make a diverge. Can I come film and make a divergence to show on you? That'd be great. So what I realized though, too, is that made it a lot easier for me. I just pull that up, reshape the bed and plant. So I didn't have to be out there work and I didn't have to, you know, no trees had to be shredded to get the wood chips, this kind of thing. And so I saved a lot of time. And then I realized, well, because I'm getting so much more food now, and it's attainable, guess what's happening? I'm not trucking vegetables in from California. You know, I'm able to keep this local. And is that reason enough? I don't know. I think it's good to never have the answer. I think it's good to struggle with that. How much plastic are we gonna allow in our life? And I'm, I'm picking on plastic right now. Uh, because I think it's actually away. great uh, uh, in some respects if that plastic always is around that 450 years and when yeah. and if even if it's after one year uh, for some reason it's just not usable that yeah. it doesn't end up in a landfill it doesn't end up in our oceans if there's some way yeah. we can yeah. turn it into a pot or a bucket you use so many buckets Let's get that plastic down That's into pellets and then eventually make our own buckets or something, but that, that we have a place for that so that it doesn't have this cradle to grave model, that it stays into a, a cycle, a life cycle that uh, is continuous. Um, that's I wouldn't have point. a, yeah, I wouldn't have a single problem. Well, I'll pick on Coca-Cola. Wouldn't have a single problem yeah. with Coca-Cola bottles. If they said, we're going to go out and, you know, we produce, a, you know, 500 million Coca-Cola bottles a, a, a day, um, whatever it is and say, but at the same time, we're going to go out and clean up our oceans, our landfills, and, and whether yeah. it's our Coca-Cola bottles or other plastic, <laughs> Every day, we're going to clean up 500 metric tons of plastic every day, and that it that it never ends up in those things where it comes back to bite us. 
And so, and, yeah. and uh, on a homestead in your environment, you, I, I think you can put places and systems in place that, that can, can do that for you. And so, and I, I see that as well. There is that conflict. And so I understand it, but there's also a way to, to deal with that conflict. The last question I have, and then, then we'll wrap it up is um, one that I always ask, I've asked you this before, what does a world that works for everyone look like for you and does it have to do with creating this lifestyle for yourself you your family those those are surrounding you um i would think uh, a world where with lots of freedom a, a world a, a world full of freedom because i think if people are allowed to express their freedom i think it's deep in our hearts uh to see problems and create solutions and i think i used to think well you had to be born an entrepreneur for example and um oh if you don't have it you just can't get it it's just too bad but then i realized somebody came here actually and they were like i was talking with them they're like no i think actually entrepreneur gets crushed in the system that we grow up in, you know, it's, it's kind of this fact, we kind of get trained to work in the factories, which there's no more factories. So it's old system. But if, if, if we were free to look around and see problems and address those problems without restrictions, uh, it would be a good thing. Cause I think deep down uh, us humans are good and creative and, and naturally seeing problems and naturally wanting to come up with solutions and then trading money or value, uh, any other value for those solutions. I love that. And, and you say that in many different respects. I want to, I want to throw some, some teasers in there. I'm sure people have heard it before. Growing your own food is like printing your own money creating your yeah. own lifestyle, creating a homestead, a lifestyle, homeschooling, homesteading, home birding, home growing your food. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a new economy. It's a new lifestyle. Yeah. It's one that's regenerative and you're not relying. On, it's a way to opt out and be self-sufficient, self-sustaining subsistence that is really an abundant life if it's done right. And the more you take those learning lessons, you build that community, you say, oh, uh, just like industry or manufacturing production, I can see some efficiencies where I can work in, in harmony with nature and harmony with my farm to make sure that 10 years or for my children, that they're still healthy soil and animals and food that we can yes. grow out of this farm forever. And that's also, you know, ties to that, that permanent culture, the permaculture yeah. and many other things that we've studied. Justin, it's been a sheer pleasure. I'm going to let you get to, to your, to your lunch and that beautiful yeah. family in the background. Um, as I say goodbye, is there any words of wisdom or last messages you want our our listeners and viewers to to hear uh, about your book and and how we can get them out there to, to get an, uh, a, a copy before March 7th. I think it's related to what you just asked me. And as they consider getting this book, uh, think about your why. I mean, uh, and remember it. So wherever you are in your journey, remember it. And if you if you go deep into my why, sure, it's it's to be healthier. It's sure I can't buy this food anywhere else, and it's really healthy and nutrient. -less. It might be the environmental reason uh, you're wanting to grow your own food and keeping it local. Whatever the reason, it might be saving money. But at, keep asking why. Well, why do you want to be healthier? Why do you want to save money? Or why do you want to preserve the environment? Keep asking. For me, I ended up back to. Um, freedom when i am when my body is healthy i am free to take a walk down the road uh to play with my kids to go do work i have a lot of choices and we and, and, and if this is start living the worldview that you want turn off the news build a garden stop stop worrying about this stuff that's out of your control be bothered by it fine but actually start trying to do something at a micro level if you if I think, oh, freedom is the answer at this macro level, I sure as heck better be making it work 
with myself and then those around me that I can have an impact on. And so as you go into this book, I think the, the, the why for this is that no matter what, what you're after, I've, I've listed a number of reasons of why you would want to grow your own food. There's the environmental, there's the, there's the, um, the money savings, there's all these things, health. Uh, it covers so many bases and really, I've done the I've done the hard work. I've done the I put in the 15 years. I read all the book. I've I have bookshelves too, this much of books I've read and underlined, and then actually gone out and done it. And now really said, how can we just boom? Just get you the base. Just get you off chickens and gardens. Let's get you started on something, and then let's get you hooked, and then you can grow from there. I absolutely. And there has been it. people that said I didn't think I could learn anything more. So. If, there is something for them too. You've been doing this a long time. This is going to give you a fresh perspective. They've said, I didn't think I could learn anymore. And I learned throughout. And then I got to chapter nine and 10 and nobody's wrote a book on this yet. So I really, they'll be like, I really enjoyed nine and 10 and the lifestyle chapters. That stuff's totally fresh. I love it. And, and it's so important. It's something I deal with. And that's exactly what I learned and, and love the most. The Rooted Life, Justin Rhodes. Thank you so much for letting us hey. inside of your ideas. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it, Justin. Take care. See you soon. Thanks.